Is Vlogmas worth it as a small YouTuber? That's what we're gonna get into today. I'm so excited to talk about this because this year I completed my very first Vlogmas and I have to say it was fun, it was challenging, it was rewarding, it was all kinds of different things. And I wanted to chat about, you know, how much output you have to do and how much energy, time, and mental capacity you have to put into vlogmas and what you get out of it as a small youtuber so i think that we all know that vlogmas is totally worth it for these large mega youtubers because they make a lot of money doing vlogmas in december and it's kind of a no-brainer like if i was a larger youtuber 100 percent i would be doing vlogmas and if that's your full-time job again no-brainer would totally do it but for myself, I'm a small YouTuber, so at the time of filming, I have just over 1,500 subscribers, and I have a full-time job. So I was debating doing Vlogmas this year or not, but last year I was also debating it, and I was talking to one of my coworkers, and we were saying like, okay, next year we have to do it. So that next year came along, and I decided to do it. I ended up doing 12 vlogs from December 1st to the 12th because I didn't want to commit myself to the full month because December is the busiest time at my job. I work at a marketing agency, I work in social media, and it is just hectic. Q4 is hectic, and I didn't want to set myself up to burn out and to fail. So I set out to do 12 vlogs, and I successfully did it, and it was honestly incredible. So I actually ended up doing another full week of daily vlogs at the end of December because I had time off work, and I knew that I could, you know, dedicate time and energy to doing these daily vlogs because I was doing my daily vlogs when I was working at the beginning of December I thought it would be so easy to do it if I had nothing but YouTube to focus on so I actually ended up publishing about 30 videos in December so I practically did vlogmas and more so I'm going to be talking about December as a whole. I'm going to tell you what my average, you know, views are per month, watch time, how many subscribers I usually gain, how much money I usually make, and then how that compares to December when I really went full out with Vlogmas. So if you're a small YouTube channel, I hope that this helps you determine whether or not Vlogmas is worth it. And of course, it's gonna be different for everyone. It's gonna be different for every channel. The thing about my channel is that I mainly do vlogs. So doing these daily vlogs was pretty easy. I usually do like weekly and weekend vlogs. And so the daily was different and something really interesting happened in like my comment section when I started doing daily vlogs. So I'm excited to talk about that as well. If you are considering doing Vlogmas, definitely stick around till the end of this video because I'm gonna be sharing some of my best tips for having a smooth and successful Vlogmas season. So let's get right into the numbers, the juicy stuff. So I have my computer in front of me. I'm gonna be pulling up some numbers and I will also put them on the screen here. And I think that it will be really interesting for you to see. Okay, so for the entire month of December, my views, almost 10,000 views. And I will say I uploaded maybe one short so this is views from long form videos so my views 9.4k what was so interesting about this is that this was about the same as usual so i <laughs> i really grinded hard and i put out nearly a video a day a long form video a day and i got the same amount of views and this was really interesting to me and I was trying to figure out why. And I think it's because in a regular month, a lot of my views are coming from like my top performing videos. For me, I've uploaded a couple of like acne, skincare journey, tretinoin videos. And those are the videos that bring in a lot of like consistent views. And so I think that it remained the same because those views were still coming in. And then I guess the views from my vlogs were kind of comparable to the vlogs that I published in previous months. Again, it's still kind of a head scratcher for me because I'm like, I feel like there should be a lot more views, but something to consider with Vlogmas is that you may not actually get more views on your videos because you're putting out so much more content and a lot of other people are doing Vlogmas. Be prepared for your views to be lower than your regular videos and don't let that scare you and don't let that prevent you from actually doing vlogmas because there are a lot of other benefits that i'm going to get into so watch time the watch time is actually where i saw a really big increase 
Now, I will say I don't really pay that much attention to watch time now that I'm monetized. If you're not monetized, Vlogmas could be a really great way for you to actually get monetized or to make progress towards monetization. So in December, my watch time hours was 854 hours, and this was 314 more than usual. So to be monetized, you need to have 4,000 watch time hours in the year. And so to think that I did like a quarter of that in one month feels really good. So again, to me, it doesn't really matter all that much. I mean, obviously I'm happy to see that the watch time was at least increased because the views weren't increased. And so if the watch time wasn't more, I'd be like, why am I doing this, you know? I mean, I do know why I'm doing this. Again, we'll get into the why and what you can expect and like why it, I personally really think it's worth it. But I was really excited to see that, you know, we got some watch time. So again, if you're a small channel and you're working towards monetization, Vlogmas is a great way for you to be like chipping away at your watch time. Let's talk about subscribers. So as mentioned, my channel at the time of filming this, let me see the exact number. At the time of filming, I have 1,564 subscribers. And in December, I gained 63 subscribers, which if you're thinking about how much time and energy you're putting into doing Vlogmas, you may not think that 63 subscribers is worth it. But personally, I am so grateful for every single one of my subscribers. And like every time I see one subscriber come in, I'm very excited because that's one person who has seen my videos and has like liked the content enough to be like, yes, subscribe. So to me, 63 subscribers is amazing. And I think that when you're a small YouTube channel, it's really important for you to celebrate the small wins. And we just have to be grateful for what is coming in. Like YouTube is a grind. It, you have to play the long game and you have to be grateful for every single subscriber because you know, when you get to the point where your channel is growing like hundreds, thousands every month, those are still broken down into individual subscribers. So you have to be grateful for each one. So I gained 63 subscribers in December and this is 27 more than usual. So again, I'm excited to see that this was you know more than usual because if it wasn't you'd be like why am i doing all of this like what excuse me hello is anyone there but i will say that i think that vlogmas brought in more subscribers because people are searching for vlogmas during december they want to get into the holiday spirit they will find new people to follow through vlogmas and at this point too vlogmas has been around for so long that a lot of like the og creators aren't doing it anymore or they're doing like a very modified version and so if you're a smaller creator it's actually an opportunity for you to get in front of people who are like youtube fans but they don't have enough people to watch during vlogmas so they could find you and the goal of vlogmas too is that if they find one of your vlogmas videos that you'll hook them and then they will go and binge watch the other ones and so to me i decided to do december 1st to 12th because i was curious if people would be like looking at vlogmas later on and maybe they could find my videos and so i really think that that helped and just like being a part of the vlogmas you know category within YouTube, I think really helped like push my videos out a little bit more. I definitely noticed my engagement like skyrocketed during Vlogmas. I noticed that some of my Vlogmas videos got more views than my regular videos that I uploaded. I think YouTube sees that you're uploading every single day and rewards that. I think that, you know, having Vlogmas in your titles and, you know, being in that category, there's like many reasons why I think that traffic wise, watch time wise, subscriber wise, and I'll get into it, but revenue wise, that it just works. So again, if you haven't tried Vlogmas as a small YouTuber, you might as well try it. I guarantee that you're gonna be hooked and you're gonna wanna do it again year after year, but just try it. See if it's worth it for your individual channel. I can sit here and say, yes, it was worth it for me, but it may not be worth it for you. Maybe you're not a vlog channel and you don't wanna be putting out vlogs. I will say, Typically Vlogmas is like daily vlogs, but some people will do, they'll pre-film sit down videos and they'll do some vlogs, some sit downs. I like the like traditional like vlog style because I love to see what people are doing. Daily vlogs are also different from weekly vlogs where daily vlogs you really get to see like what someone is doing in their entire day. And I find that really interesting. And it's like kind of voyeuristic where you're actually seeing like, you know, the whole day and you're kind of forced to film even when you don't want to film. And so you get the good, the bad, it's really, it's really interesting to me. I watched a, vlog, a lot of Vlogmas and I decided to do Vlogmas because I've been watching Vlogmas for many years. So let's get into the money side of things. So 
This is a really interesting thing about Vlogmas. A lot of creators do Vlogmas because advertisers pay a lot more money in December to get their ads on videos. And this is because they're using up their budgets for the year. It's the holiday season. So a lot of companies, like that's when they do most of their sales, right? Is when they're pushing for people to do holiday shopping. And so on YouTube, typically you'll earn, you know, more per view Typically RPMs are a lot higher in December and so by uploading more and having like a higher average RPM You just end up making more money. So I'm going to share my revenue numbers. So This year this year was the first full year that I was monetized on YouTube and typically my average is to make around $50 Canadian per month and after taxes like it's really not that much it does buy me a couple coffees every month which i'm very grateful for honestly i'm very grateful to be monetized and to make any money from youtube at all so i don't want to complain but you know it's a small token amount however if i look at you know the past like six months okay so july i made 46 dollars august 37 summer can be kind of slow on youtube september 54 october 46 November 58 and in December 93 so you can see there's a huge difference between December and my other months and this would be a combination between YouTube paying out more for the ads on the videos and then also the sheer volume of videos that I put out that you know if every video is earning a couple dollars here and there I'm gonna end up making more money so is the $93 worth it I don't know is it worth it to you <laughs> To me, the money is not the thing that made Vlogmas worth it. I think like we can look at these numbers, but let's get into the intangibles or the qualitative, not quantitative metrics really mattered the most to me. So for me, I feel like I learned a lot about my content creation process and how it can work best for me. And it was amazing to just be in a flow. Every day I would wake up and I would know like, okay, start filming. And I would kind of figure out ways of like what I wanted to film. You know, I'd film my coffee in the morning. I'd film myself getting ready. Then I'd go to work. There'd be a couple of like dark hours. I'd maybe get a clip or two if I went out for coffee. Then after work, I'd pick the camera back up. I'd film, you know, throughout the evening. I would show my dinner. And I just felt like I got into a really great rhythm. And it was very rewarding because when you're, when you're filming, editing, and publishing a video every single day, you get like a very direct feedback loop from your audience and you get to see comments in real time, you get to switch up things like right away. You know, someone says, oh, I loved seeing this, then you know like, okay, I'm gonna do more of that. And it just felt like I was in a creative flow and there was just something about it that was like really magical. So I think that was one of the main things that made it worth it for me. But the other main thing was that the reaction from my audience was so positive, so kind, and I really feel like the work that I did all year kind of like came to a head and like it was being appreciated during vlogmas my audience again was leaving such nice comments you know every there were some people like maybe about like five to seven people that would comment on every video they were very kind they would leave like thoughtful feedback and a lot of people were basically just saying like thank you for doing vlogmas this has been so fun i love watching these and like if you get even one comment like that it's really going to like push you to continue and i think that you have to do youtube for that reason you have to be you do youtube for the like handful of people that are watching and enjoying you have to think about them as like individual people and not just like a subscriber count like i was talking about before these are real people watching you and i find youtube to be so fulfilling because unlike other platforms people have to sit and spend a lot of time watching you and investing in you and so for me what i like doing is that i can give them my vulnerability in exchange for their you know attention and their investment in me and my life i find it's so fulfilling and rewarding to hear someone say i love watching you and your life you know like how great is that that's like the greatest compliment that you could give me and so i just felt like at, during vlogmas it all came to a head and i just felt like my audience was being so kind to me and i felt like i wanted to keep uploading daily and and give them that content because they were being appreciative and you know receptive and tuning in and it just was like warm and fuzzy all around so that was like the main reason why I would do vlogmas again and that's one of the main reasons why I did that second like little stint where I did a full week of daily vlogs is because when I again when I mentioned oh I might do this like second week people were like yes do it we loved when you did vlogmas and so it just felt amazing 
and it, it gave me some validation that like, okay, I'm on the right track. If there are this handful of people that are really enjoying my videos, then that means that there are other people like that that can hopefully find my videos next year and we can continue to like grow this channel together. So I would say that if you're a small creator and you're, you know, you've been working hard like all year and you are not getting that many comments or that much engagement and you're not sure if you're on the right track, Vlogmas is like a true test of like, is this community being built in the way that I want it to? Is my content like resonating with people? Like you will get, you'll either get validated or not. And I mean, I guess for me, I, I can sit here and say like, oh, it's so worth it because I feel like my community really like came and showed out and like gave support to me, which felt amazing. And I can't guarantee that that's gonna happen for you. But it's a way for you to really visibly put yourself out there and say, hey, I'm showing up every day and the people who have been watching your videos it's it's giving them an opportunity to comment and to engage because if you're posting one video a week that's not that many opportunities for people to really like get into the conversation but if you're vlogging every single day and posting that people have a lot of stuff to comment on and to engage with and i just feel like it gives you know this opportunity it's like a performance review it's like a performance <laughs> review where your audience can kind of let you know how you're doing and i just found that to be incredible it was it was just so rewarding and honestly i would love to do a month sometime this year where i'm daily vlogging maybe it's not during vlogmas because it was just a creative challenge it was it was just incredible so obviously i think that doing vlogmas is worth it but i'm going to share a couple of tips that i've put together that if you are a smaller youtuber that this could help you if you're considering doing vlogmas so there was a couple of key things that I did that really made it like smooth. I honestly didn't find Vlogmas to be that hard and I feel like grateful that that was the case. I think that for me like I was able to stay healthy through the whole thing. I this year or I guess it's 2024 now but in 2023 I got sick a lot and when I'm sick it's really hard to you know work and do YouTube and so I was grateful that I stayed healthy throughout all of Vlogmas so I think that really helped but honestly I didn't find it that hard. I didn't find it that hard. I was uploading videos between like 10 minutes and 20 minutes so i wasn't doing like you know 30 minute vlogs but that worked for me and it was awesome okay so my tips before vlogmas starts you want to prepare your equipment so for me that was ordering an extra battery because i only have one battery well i only had one battery for my camera and i knew that during vlogmas i needed to be like prepared with a backup so i ordered an extra battery from amazon and I also ordered a new SD card and I ordered an SD card that had like four times the storage of the card that I was working on because I used to run out of space all the time and I knew for Vlogmas, especially if I was pre-filming anything, I needed a lot of storage. So I got an SD card that was like two, 250 gigs or something like that and I didn't deal with any storage issues. Another thing you can do is to pre-film footage. Now, there's a lot of videos on YouTube about tips on how to do Vlogmas and a lot of people will say like pre-film like full videos and like pre-film a bunch of stuff. I have a little bit of a hot take here where I think the beauty of Vlogmas is getting content in real time. So I think that audiences can tell when you pre-film content, they can tell by like, you know, if you're someone who like does your nails, your hair, like your outfit, they can tell you know, even for me, like your home, if it's not decorated for Christmas, like you can tell if it's pre-filmed. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend to try to avoid that. So it's this weird balance of like pre-filming some stuff, but not pre-filming stuff that's gonna be very obvious that you pre-filmed. So I'll give you some examples. I pre-filmed one whole video and this whole video was a baking for Christmas video. And that was so that I had one day that I didn't have to worry about putting up a video and so it was like pre-filmed, edited, and it was scheduled to go live. But that's the only one that I did it for because I wanted the other ones to be true vlogs and to be true like daily vlogs. I also pre-filmed a couple things where my hands and my face weren't in it. So it was like my POV. So for example, I had a couple of like shopping trips before December that I took a couple of clips of like the Christmas decor and when I was shopping for things but again not putting my face or my hands in it so that it wasn't obvious that it was pre-filmed and again these are just like a couple little clips and so I didn't really pre-film much other than that one full video another thing that you could do which I did is 
if you have anything exciting happening, say like the end of November, take clips of that and then in December, recount that and be like, oh, I wanted to catch you up that I did this and this and this and overlay the footage on top of that. So you're basically saying like, this is pre-filmed stuff, you know, but you're kind of like including it as points of interest. So I did that for the first couple of vlogs in December. There was a couple times where I was like, you know, I went and got a facial, I went for dinner with my sisters and I overlaid some clips from there. So again, just to add interest into a daily vlog where I wouldn't be doing all of those things like getting a facial, going out for dinner, doing all of these things in one day. So I thought that, that was like a, a unique tip. So you can steal that from me for sure. But I would say like you can plan and prep, but don't pre-film too much because the beauty of Vlogmas is to get that in the moment content. And you also want it to be continuous. You want people to see you like through your month and it will be obvious if you insert yourself pre-filmed right in the middle. So the other tip that I have is to put together your design template for your thumbnails. So for me, I put together a template where I liked like the title and I basically just did like Vlogmas day one, day two, day three. And then I did like a grid where I would insert three photos from the video again to keep it current. You don't really want to pre-design your thumbnails because it's not going to be current. It's not going to be what's actually in the video. But to kind of put together a style, you want people to be able to pick out like, oh, that's Mel's Vlogmas. And so you could play around with a couple different things, but I personally did like the exact same template so that it would all look cohesive and that worked for me. So my last tip is to give yourself a schedule and give yourself a filming cutoff time. So if you're doing daily vlogs, like you could be filming until you go to bed at night. However, you do need to edit the video. So I gave myself like a rough cutoff time around dinner time, unless I had plans after dinner that were, you know, gonna be good vlog inclusions like my holiday Christmas party. So what I would do is I would stop myself, I would stop filming at around dinner time and then I would like get my dinner and then while I was eating dinner and after dinner, I would sit down, edit, and then I would upload the video and then it'd be ready to go and scheduled for the next morning. So I think this is really important because when you're doing Vlogmas, you might be thinking about like how much time you have to film, but you have to think about how much time you actually have to edit as well. I will say, keep your editing simple. Again, the beauty of Vlogmas is for people to just see what you're doing, what you're up to. Like you don't have to spend a lot of time editing and doing any crazy transitions or anything. I think the beauty of it is like really like raw footage and just, you know, add it in, make it interesting, cut, cut it down where it's boring but don't spend too much time on it. The thing that took me the longest time was actually like exporting and uploading to YouTube. If you know, you know, that takes hours. So give yourself a cutoff time and you know, do what you can and don't overextend yourself. Just get it done. Just try your best, get it done, have fun with it. Honestly, if you haven't, if you haven't picked up on it in this whole video, I highly recommend doing Vlogmas. It was so fun. It was so worth it as a small channel. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments. I would love to chat more about Vlogmas. I already can't wait and I still have a year to wait to do my next Vlogmas. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love, love, love to have you. I do vlogs. I talk about personal finance. I do what I spend in a month videos. And you know, it's a good time over here. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye. Bye.